It's time to sit back, relax, and listen to Conversations with Joan. Conversations with Joan will inspire, motivate, and empower you. Live your best life now. Listen, learn, think, and decide. And now, here's your host, Joan Herman. Welcome to Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life's Conversations with Joan. I'm Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in. Conversations with Joan focuses on topics that are important to your life, from health and wellness to professional development to personal well-being. Change makers join me to share their insights, tips, and strategies so you can thrive and live your best life now. Thank you for taking time for yourself, and thank you for letting us be a part of your life. Now, let's start talking. In January, many people set new goals for the year. They resolve to lose weight and get in shape. And while we know what we should do, usually a few weeks into our attempts at change, we fall back into our old patterns and habits. According to today's guest, Dr. Andreas Michaelides, when it comes to your goals, having the right mindset is key to any successful change in behavior. You might know what you should do, but what matters is why you want to do it and how you're going to do it in a way that works for you long term. Dr. Michaelides is a clinical psychologist who is chief of psychology for Noom. He developed Noon's human coaching program, and he oversees a team that helps users meet their long-term goals by better understanding themselves, their brain, and the science of choice. The innovative team behind Noom has written their first book, The New Mindset, Learn the Science, Lose the Weight. Welcome, Dr. Michaelides. Thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Great to be here. Doctor, at this time of year, so many of us are trying to overhaul our lives. Why do you believe we aren't always successful? Yeah, so... You know, so January 1st is, is uh, for many people, um, a reset. It's a mental reset. It's a time where we, we believe that, um, you know, we can start over and do something different. And I think a lot of times people fail with their, um, with their resolutions because um, they fall into the same patterns that they do a- every time. And, and so as a human, uh, you know, with, with brains that want to operate efficiently, we want to operate, uh, you know, we, we have patterns in order to help us operate efficiently. And so, uh, so a lot of times what happens is, um, is we fall into to very, very similar, similar patterns. Um, and a lot of those patterns are also, um, you know, we talk about a lot of those patterns within, within the book. Um, and, and that has to do with like overcoming obstacles and, and things of, of that nature. So, uh, so yeah, so at this time, uh, you know, we're all falling into to very, very similar uh, patterns, I believe. Do you think we have trouble because we try to change the behavior without addressing the trigger or the reward? Yeah, I, it, it, it really depends. It, it really depends on, on the person. But I think, you, you know, you said it really well. I mean, we're trying to change our, our behavior using potentially uh, techniques or, or approaches uh, that we've used in the past that that are continuously not you know not very very helpful and so we're kind of falling into the same um, you know into the same routine or the same traps uh, that we do uh, year over year. Someone like myself, I'm a yo-yo dieter. I have lost weight and gained weight for most of my life. And when we go on a diet, and and I hate that word diet because it implies that we're going on something and off something. But when we decide that we want to lose weight. What types of strategies should we be implementing to avoid that yo-yo dieting? Yeah, and I mean that is that is something that a lot of people you know can, can relate to, and, and it, it, it's 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 um uh it, it's a yeah it's a very understandable pattern. You know, I think I think it's important that any any approach that you take when it comes to your your you know your when I say diet, I don't mean diet, and to, to your way of eating or to your behavior should be really sustainable um, and, and really make, you know, make sense within the context of, of your life. Um, what happens is, is, is something that for many people is something that you, you know, you, you called out in that, you know, you'll do something really different um, that is not sustainable. And then when, once you stop doing it, you absolutely will gain the weight back uh, because, you know, because it's hard to maintain something so, so temporary. Um, so I think one of the biggest keys that we, you know, we talk about at Noom is really doing things in your life that are um, are, are, are lifelong things, the things that you can actually maintain uh, well beyond uh, the program itself. So you just mentioned Noom. What makes Noom different from any other type of program? 
Yeah, so we don't think of Noom as like a, a, a specifically as a, as a as a diet, right? So we think about Noom as something. If you look at the company's mission, uh, it, it you know the mission is to help people everywhere lead healthier lives through through behavior change. And so you can you can apply these principles um, to virtually anything that you're trying to do in order to to change your behavior, whether that's stress management, it could be it could be weight loss. Um, and you can even use you can even use all of the things that we talk about when it comes to any one of you know the the the, the dietary approaches that you're that you're talking about. Um, the goal the goal of the book and of the, the program is to really help you increase your awareness of your your behavior. Um, and once you can increase your awareness of your behavior and your patterns, then you can actually be able to to change uh, to change a lot of. Uh, the things that you're doing, but Noom, you're not going to come in and, and see like a prescription of what you can and cannot eat. It, it doesn't. It's not. It's not like that. Um, it's more a journey of of, of yourself and um, how to change your behavior be, behavior uh, in a way that is uh, sustainable for the for the long term. So when we start to love ourselves, you know, we talk to ourselves in a way that we would never speak to another human being. So when we change that internal dialogue and we start to love ourselves and we start to respect who we are, would that naturally translate into us wanting to take better care of ourselves and therefore lose weight? Yeah, I I mean, even above and beyond the the, the weight, you know, having an internal dialogue that is kind to yourself is is so so important for so many different facets of of, of health. Um, you know, I think you I think you said it well. It, it, you know, we we speak to ourselves in a way that maybe we wouldn't speak to other other people, um, and that's really unfortunate because you know we we're with ourselves longer than with any anybody, and so that's a that's a really long time um, uh, to you know to have um, a dialogue that that's un, uh, unkind. But you're right. It, it, you know, if you are able to change some of those patterns and and by the way those those thoughts uh that you're talking about that is part of of the patterns that we have you know we see something we go through an experience and we try to make sense of it and we we interpret it in a way that can be helpful or 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 unhelpful um and changing some of that internal dialogue can have um uh, a a resounding impact on many facets of, of our health And changing that internal dialogue would help us to stay motivated. We have highs and lows in our motivation. It goes up, it goes down. And I'm one of those people that if I slip and eat a potato chip, I say to myself, well, you know, I might as well eat the whole bag. I failed. And so by changing that internal dialogue, that then would help us to stay motivated. Absolutely. Motivation does go up and down. And And I think, you know, the one thing to know is that the, the going up and down is not a um, almost like a deviation from from the process, but an actual part of the process. Um, and you know, having one potato chip and eating the whole bag of so, so something like that is is almost the analogy that is analogous to you know, uh, let's say um, uh, going to work and having a really bad day at work, and then saying, oh. I quit my job because I had one really you know r- really you know sort of not great day day at work. Um, and, and so, yeah, we, we kind of do, we kind of do these things, um, and we base a lot of things off of, off of our motivation, which changes so rapidly. Um, but the, the, perhaps the most challenging thing is actually seeing these things take place in front of you. Um, and then once you start seeing them, then you can actually start, start changing them and then create new patterns that are, that are, uh, you know, healthier or, or more conducive to your life. And that potato chip example, it really illustrates the way we talk to ourselves. The minute we slip up, we tell ourselves that we're a failure and we'll never be able to accomplish our goal. And so when we can rewrite that internal dialogue, it will help us stay on track. Absolutely. Yeah. And and a lot of that has to do with cultivating a a growth mindset. Um, You know, if you're thinking about changing your behavior as a journey, um, when, when you, when you have a, a, uh, something like a slip or something where you're you're doing something that is not you're not proud of you know there's such power in shifting your internal dialogue to from you know I'm 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 worthless or I'm not able to do something or I'm less than to okay this is a learning opportunity for me in the you know this happened and I and I did this and so um, so making the shift from from that internal dialogue to one that is um, 
you, you know, treats it as a learning experience is, is very, very powerful to, to, many, uh, to many of our numerous. Doctor, for someone who's listening to us right now and is saying, that's wonderful advice, but it's really hard to do, what strategies can you offer to help someone get started and stay on course? It is extremely hard to do. <laughs> uh, so I think first and foremost, I want to say uh, very clearly that is a very, it's a very difficult thing to do in, in, in general. Um, but the, the, the best strategy I would say uh, to, to think about is to really start off small. Um, you know, going into something like this uh, when you're trying to change your behavior and, and, and saying, all right, I'm going to change everything in my life, you know, from, from A to Z uh, on day one. I mean, that's, you're likely setting up a recipe for failure. So I think the, the, the most basic strategy is to just to try and start with one thing. And it doesn't have to even be related to, to, to weight loss. Um, it can just be understanding the, you know, the, the why you're trying to do it and, and really anchoring yourself into giving yourself context as to why you even want to maybe make a lifestyle change. Um, you know, that context can be really, really, really important. So I think first and foremost is to just really, really start off small um, and, and do something that is, uh, and set a very, uh, uh, what we call smart goals which are uh, specific, measurable, achievable, relevant, and time-bound um, around something extremely, extremely small. And then, you know, once, once, you're, once you've had that experience, then you kind of build on, on that. Um, but just really start off small. That, that would be my biggest advice. How important is it for us to understand the why behind our behavior? For example, when I was growing up, one of the really special things I used to do with my mom is we would sit down at night and watch television together and we would have a special treat. And that always made me feel close to her. Now that she's gone, I find myself snacking in the same way at night, probably unconsciously because I'm trying to feel connected to my mother. By understanding the why behind our behavior, does that help us to make lasting change? Yes, absolutely. Absolutely. Uh, you know, having that awareness around your your eating habits can be really, really powerful. Um, in that, if you're trying to change something and you know where where that's coming from, then you can do something in a different way to to connect with you know with your mother. Um, so, you know, I I, I just want to say like c- c- kudos to you for having that awareness and 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 understanding where that's coming from, because that's a very difficult thing for, for a lot of people. Um, the why is not only important on some of those day-to-day behaviors that, that you know, you might be tackling uh, if you're trying to change your behavior, but it, it's also important to give context as to like the, the why you're even doing all of this. Why, why do you want to, why does somebody want to lose weight? Um, and to really dig through that a little bit more, because oftentimes many people will start off, um, you know, wanting to lose weight because they want to lose weight. Um, and there's no deeper thought to that. And then, you know, you, you might hit a roadblock and, and then that kind of potentially goes away because you didn't really give it, a, a, you know, the context uh, uh, or the deeper meaning. And so, so we really, really do promote uh, understanding yourself within uh, your health journey Um, as a means for being able to make meaningful changes um, along the way. And I use that as an example because I think most of us do things without really giving any thought to the why behind our actions. And so while I used eating as an example, it could also relate to someone smoking or drinking or any other type of behavior that is trying to fill an emotional void. Yes, absolutely. Uh, You know, the brain is so complex. Uh, and it's a, you know, we have a, a brain that is wired for emotions. It's wired for logic. It's wired for survival, for, 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 for many, many different things. And, and, uh, you know, we make associations, uh, in very, very unique ways. And, and that's why it's important to know that the approach that we, we think about at Noom is not, you know, this is the, this is the way you do it. You have to do X, Y, and T. And, you know, this, you're going to find the meaningful outcome. It's really a matter of understanding those connections within yourself and, and, and applying a, a lot of our techniques to, you know, what is custom to your life and the way that your brain is wired. Doctor, how can we stay healthy in a world that doesn't really promote health? Yeah, the world is not, is not um, 
along for the journey uh, for your your health journey. Uh, you know, unfortunately, these are things that uh, many people tackle that are in conflict with how the world operates. Food is re readily available, all types of food at all times. You know, we we have um, you know situations where you know we we are um, maybe we're living with a partner who is not on the same health journey, or you know you live in a, you work in an office environment that. Um, you know, that, that is the opposite of, of the, the healthy lifestyle that you're trying to cultivate. And I think understanding that, you know, the, the changes that you have to make or the changes that you'll make uh, have to do with start with yourself in order to react differently to an environment that you maybe cannot change. There are elements, obviously, of, of your environment that you can change, but there are also a lot of elements that you potentially cannot change. And so, Understanding how to navigate those two different things in, in different ways, um, it can be really the difference between uh, between you know finding success in your in your changes that you're wanting to make and um, falling into similar patterns. When someone signs up for Noom, what can he or she expect? Yeah, so uh, so a couple different ways. So you you would go to Noom.com and uh, you would start off by taking a, a a quiz or an assessment that allows us to understand. A little bit more about your specific situation. Everyone's situation is a little bit different, uh, and after that, you will uh, be able to sign up for a, a trial just to get a sense of the program uh, before committing to uh, to purchasing. Um, you can also go and uh, purchase the book. Uh, the book also comes with a, a free trial as well. We have an audio book. We have um, you know we have a physical book, and and the book can be purchased from any, uh, any book retailer out there. In addition to lifestyle changes, do you make any dietary recommendations? Um, so if somebody is trying to, to, to lose weight, um, we give them information about nutrition. So we, we do have in, in nutritional information, and somebody can log their weight in order to gain additional uh, insight as to some of their, their patterns, uh, but food logging is not a you know mandatory requirement of the program. It is a, a temper. We view it very much as a temporary tool to increase awareness as you um, you know as you try to discover what works and what does not work for you. How is the success rate with this approach? Are you finding that people are making changes that last? Yeah, absolutely. We 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 find that uh, many people make lasting uh, changes and and. You know, when I say that, I don't actually mean uh, only for for weight loss. Um, I actually mean for a lot of things other than weight loss. You know, we we have uh, yes, a lot of people who go through the program, you know, make very many meaningful changes. But also, the the I guess my favorite stories are ones where we have our numerous uh, sign up and say, yeah, I wanted to like let's say lose the next amount of of weight, but at the end of the program. You know, I didn't lose the, the, the weight that I wanted to lose initially. Um, and many times, what, what, one of the biggest findings that we have is that the, uh, many, many new, new folks have um, uh, weight loss expectations that may not be realistic. But at the end of the program, uh, they're, they walk away with some very, very different um, skills and uh, thoughts about themselves that they can translate to other areas of their life, like self-efficacy and, and the way they feel of self-esteem and the way they feel about themselves. Um, so that's a, that's always my favorite uh, thing to hear is, is people gaining so much more as far as uh, skills that they can apply to other areas of their life as well. Once again, the book is The New Mindset, Learn the Science, Lose the Weight. Doctor, in our final moments, what's the takeaway? What would you like to leave our listeners with? Um, start small. Uh, really, really just start small. I mean, I said it earlier, and I, but I really, really mean it. Um, you know, changing your behavior is very overwhelming. It's very difficult. And, and in many ways, uh, you know, we live in a world that is not conducive to that. And so I would say start small and, um, you know, give yourself a bunch of, of grace because it's a, it's a lifelong journey. It's not... Uh, it's not a, a, a temporary, uh, quick, quick fix kind of thing. So um, start small and love yourself, I guess is what I would say. Dr. Michaelides, thank you so much for joining us. Thank you so much for having me. Thank you for joining us. I hope you found the show informative. At 
Let Change Your Attitude Change Your Life, we believe that knowledge is power. Take what you've learned, apply it, and live your best life now. Remember that the information provided is the opinion of our guests and should never replace the advice of a professional who knows your personal situation. If you'd like more information, visit our website, cyacyl.com. That stands for Change Your Attitude, Change Your Life. While on our site, listen to past shows on demand, read the digital magazine, sign up for our mailing list, and be sure to follow the show on social media. Until next time, this is Joan Herman. Thanks for tuning in.